Welcome to the KFIC Cafe. My name is JT. And it's Jay. And this week, because we are both about uh, pretty well into our college um, college semester already, we'll be doing a lot shorter podcast episodes. And as such, we will be continuing last week's topic of pet peeves and things that we found um, that just irks us sometimes. Um, before we begin, a shout out to OX Minjun XO who reached out to me um, over Discord and we just chatted for a while about writing and story creation and I kind of broke down a bit of my story for him and we talked about his story and what how like what he hopes to accomplish and how he wants to work things out um, and how to manage things with a tight schedule which me and Jay definitely understand from experience. <laughs> now we're going to jump straight in with our quote of the week. To gain your own voice, you have to forget about having it heard. Allen Ginsberg. So Allen Ginsberg is a 1940s-ish poet slash writer. He wrote Kaddish and other poems, The Fall of America, um, Howl and other poems. Uh, I guess you could, you could say it's a bit more of, um, he was part of the beat movement. Um, and so if those of you don't know history, you can go check it out. Um, he's worked with Jack um, Kerouac. Uh, I, I guess we should probably break it down a bit before we get into it. But um, my understanding of this quote, to gain your own voice, you have to forget about having it heard, is in, especially with the fanfics that we're seeing now, um, too many people add, include things, and they do things in a specific manner in order to cater to the K-pop community on Wattpad or any other or basically their audience is catered specifically to keep the K-pop audience and to appeal specifically for them. And we will be bringing up some pet piece that, that kind of falls into it. And maybe later, if we ever do a cliche slash tropes episode, we will definitely touch on this again. Um, Jay, you want to add anything to your, maybe your interpretation of the quote? Not right now. Not right now. All right. Not right now. <laughs> well, then in, in that case, we should jump straight into our, well, at least mine is a very massive list. We'll jump into our long train of pet peeves. Jay, you have one you want to start us off with, or I can just pick one from uh, my list? i pick up one. All right. Um, so on. the first per pet peeve that I used to have, but not really anymore since I don't really see it, mm -hmm. is essay writing. When you're writing a story, it's important to realize that not every single thing is going to be a paragraph. Like, you're not writing mm -hmm. an essay. You're not analyzing your writing, you're telling the narration, it's a brief narration a lot of times, and then you follow by the dialogue, then some more narration. I specifically can relate to this purely because my first story that's no longer on Webpack and nobody needs to see that, um, I did a lot of essay writing and it, looking back at it now, I'm disgusted. I was very disgusted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have this somewhere deep down in my list, but are you, <laughs> I'm basically assuming you're talking about block text. Like mm. big chunks of text okay yeah so yeah. how i see block text at least that's i call it block text instead of essay writing is a lot of people kind of like you're we're, we're trained and taught to write things as a paragraph but the thing you have to understand with writing is when you do especially when you're doing dialogue dialogue does not follow the same rules you can't have a massive text of but uh of quotes blah 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 blah, blah quote and they say stuff and then quote and then all the descriptions and other quotes are tied into one big block of text. Um, that's just not how it works because it's very hard for your eyes to discern what is from what, who is talking, and that's why you have paragraph breaks. Um, for example, my current paragraph, I'm sitting on four pages. However, it's only 1,500 1, words long, which is not that much. Um, but that's because my dialogue is, I, there, there are rules. There are rules in terms of dialogue, in terms of uh, how do you do the paragraphs. And, and I reached out to some people when I did some of their um, editing, telling, I don't have it right now off the top of my head, but there are certain rules when you're writing dialogue as to, in terms of creative writing, at, at least, um, when do you change paragraphs? When do you start a new paragraph? Because I think another thing is textbooks. Textbooks are all in paragraphs. And when we see a big block of text, our brain just, you know, shuts down and we don't really want to look at it. So at most, the big, the bigger of the block texts should be um, for descriptions or explaining what is happening in the scene. But in terms of dialogue, you need to space those out 
because block text is not very easy to read for your eyes. Yeah, anything else, Dad? Uh, no, no. Woo, first pet peeve, and it's only been five minutes. Okay, what do I have? Do you want to continue, or should I? Let's, I'll, we can all, we'll alternate, we'll alternate. Yeah. Yeah. I have here, okay, so what I do with my pet peeves list is as I'm reading um, stories off of Wattpad, if there's something that strikes me as unnerving or I just don't like it, I just throw it down as quickly as I can into my notes app. And so what I have here might not make much sense, so I might have to take some time to figure out what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> I have here use of idle traits, and I put traits in quotation marks. So I have Shina Yubu, Tiger Cub, Dubu. Oh, I think this one I was thinking about. Um, going back to the, the quote of the week, um, I guess stereotypes or traits that are kind of attributed to the idols by fans. So, you know, you have Sana who looks like a Shina Iwu, you have Chaeyoung from Blackpink who looks like a chipmunk, you have Chaeyoung from Twice who looks like a tiger cub, Dahyun being tofu, um, and there, there are so much more. And the thing that irks me about it is everybody includes these. And it's really irritating to look at. It's not even entertaining to read and read these kind of stuff anymore because there is no real meaning for it to be there in the story. Most of the time, it's just there because like, hey, you're probably reading this because you're a Twice fan or something. So, hey, look, I included this little Twice, um, this little Twice thing in there and I hope you'll appreciate it or something. And at this point, I've just seen so many people use it and it's not really there for any real purpose aside from, hey, I'm a Twice fan too. Look what I know as well. Um, and it's just not fun anymore because it's so overused and not really well used anyway. Does, did, did that make sense, Jay? Because I feel like it's a very <laughs> odd one to talk about. It's, if you understand, like, if someone shares the same pet peeve, I believe that they'll be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I think if I'm a newcomer and I'm just hearing that, I'm like, Mm, what what I'm not sure. come again <laughs> yeah uh so again pet peeves are very 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 subjective and opinionated so this one just applies to me i'm, I'm sure pe the people who are listening to this podcast right now um probably don't say it say, see it in the same way because they may be they might use it as well but i think every little thing that you include in your writing needs to have a purpose mm. uh I quote from Teller from the Magic Duo, Penn and Teller, action is motion with a purpose. And so when you do a movement that doesn't really make sense or the audience can't really discern the purpose of the motion, then it becomes suspicious and a bit out of place. So mm -hmm. look at that, incorporating magic philosophy and principles into real life application. <laughs> I'm not useless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's see, my second one, um, dull characters. Um, I see that a lot of, uh, not a lot, but oftentimes when I'm reading, there are, there's the main character in which, you know, you're going, they're going to have a certain personality, which relates a lot more to the actual author. But what happens is that there are other characters that are practically like just there, like they don't express these diff they don't express a different personality they don't express themselves at all and one way that i've counteract this and i'm pretty sure we mentioned this last time or either an episode before um to use the myers and Briggs personality test because i oh, utilize yeah. that mm -hmm. and let's just say the secondary character for my project everybody's gonna love them <laughs> not the main character but the secondary character because that's all that matters <laughs> Yeah, that's um, so I'm assuming these are characters that side characters rather than background characters, right? Yes, yeah. right, yeah. So, like, sometimes you'll see, I think what I'm getting at here is um, you see characters who are that the that the author points out to the readers, but mm. they don't really serve any real purpose in the story, or their personalities or individualities are not entirely fleshed out to become a character in which you can either love or hate or you can dedicate an emotion towards. If you look to uh, Harry Potter, because Harry Potter is always a great example, there's a myriad of characters that you love and hate. The easiest ones would be the teachers, you know, um, or at least the villains, because there are people who love Voldemort. And if you think from a fan perspective, but I think everybody can collectively agree that we all hate Umbridge. 
with a burning passion. <laughs> yeah. So I if you think about it, both of them are bad. Bad. They're they're bad guys. However, they they have characteristics that makes them like with Voldemort both likable and detestable in one form or another. Uh, at least detestable to the characters in the in the series. But Umbridge, the character that that was created for her is. I think just geared so everybody just hates her, and that's again personality, de- organic character development, and character design. You have to be able to. You need, your characters need to be real, okay? They can't just be. Oh, I'm gonna throw one here. I'm gonna throw another one there. Um, <laughs> it, it's maybe it's easy, but it's just not very, you know, relatable or just not entertaining. And it just makes it harder for you as, as well because now you have to deal with that character as well. And if you don't really give them a real, a, a real personality or a real characteristic, then it's going to be harder to imagine what is he going to actually, he or she is going to actually do inside your story. Mm. Yeah. Good, that was a good one. And dull characters. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> man, there's a lot of shorthand in my list. So I have, <laughs> good Lord. So there's Jaggy and Opa. Um, it's oh. elongated. It, and then the, <laughs> Jay is like dying across the camera. So, what I, I, but the thing is, as I stretched the last, sil- the last vowel of um, each of the words, so it's kind of like a more like, uh, God, I really don't know how to describe it without sounding super weird over the camera. <laughs> but it's kind of like, um, I'm not going to describe it on here because it's going to make me sound really gay and I'm straight. So I'm just going to send. <laughs> I'm going to let, let Jay know through the chat what I'm trying to get at. I got you. you can help me convey it to you. <laughs> so this is that one. And then there's this one. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. I okay, got you. he gets it. You're going to have to help me explain this because it's going to be really weird <laughs> explaining this over an audio. Um, it's basically... You, you're utilizing actual onomatopoeia in terms of getting a certain sound out. So they took opa or jaggy. I don't know if it's jaggy or, or yagi or I don't know. Um, God, I need to learn my Korean. But anyway, I'm looking at the, um, the, the rom- romanization of these words. And so jaggy, uh, they elongated the I. Okay. And then for opa, they elongated the P and the A's. And it's the idea of dragging out that sound, so it's more of a whine sound, like like an egg yolk from like one of the one of the idols or something. <laughs> Don't do that. That is so cringe. Oh my lord. Oh. <laughs> continue. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, the thing I don't, I, I really don't like about him is that. It does. Then it starts to defeat the purpose of dialogue tags, and it's more onomatopoeia rather than actual dialogue. And it just doesn't look nice to me. It, it is, this is really personal for me because it just doesn't look very aesthetic to me. Instead of saying, or instead of writing that, and then and then and then end quotations said so and so, I would I would just put opa or a jaggy, and I would put I put maybe one of those. What are those? The squiggles, you know, like squiggles, <laughs> squiggles yeah. over the N that turns the N sound into the Nia. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Like maybe add that after the word to get the to convey the feeling of it's kind of long. It's it's a long sounded word, and then they're stretching it out to convey like an uh, I don't know an alluring kind of tone or like an agile kind of tone. But I just don't like it when you elongate those words. Like I understand the purpose of them, I just don't like it. Yeah, like that, like that, like that. I have no idea what he said, though. (laughs) Okay. Anywho, moving forward. All right. My third pet peeve is inconsistency in writing styles. Writing styles or like? Or just like inconsistency in, in general. So like... Thoughts and dialogue, like, you know, there are people who used italics to represent thoughts, but at some point in time later on in the story, the italics are either taken oh. out, they are accompanied by quotation marks, but okay. if they were supposed to represent thoughts, they should have just stayed the way they were. Mm-hmm. And yeah. another one is pub changes. 
how people change that around. Some people do it naturally and just like what around? meanwhile, the pub changes. Oh, yeah, point POV. of view. POV. Yeah. And like for me, I used to do it. As I mentioned, it's not a pet peeve unless I've done it and gotten tired of it and I hate it. So, <laughs> um, I think the easiest so, way is to go with a third person, per, per, um, person yeah, uh, third person. And then just like, kind of dabble in between limited and omniscient and just little alternate back and forth between the two. I'm finding myself doing that a lot lately and it's just yeah. Stop it's it. cringy. <laughs> um what was the first one you said? Uh was... like the thoughts or example. Okay, so cons- consistency. Yeah. Yes. So another thing that we should also point out is as a writer, even though we say um in order to have your voice heard, you have to forget about having it heard. Now he that's in terms of content. The whole purpose of the writer is when you write your story, it is made for, so that way it's easy for your readers to read and comprehend. So this also kind of goes in with block text as well. You have to be able to, your goal is you want your readers to read your story, relate with your story, fall in love with your story, whatever. And when they make it to the end, they will appreciate your story. Or at least that's the goal. Mm. But if you make it difficult for them to follow along the story, so this does have to, this might come in with grammar or whatnot, but it's, you have to, the whole point is, the whole point you're writing is not just for yourself, it's because you want other people to read it as well at, at, at one point or another. Mm-hmm. And so if when another person reads it and they can't follow your train of thought, then you only have one audience down, that's just you. Maybe that is your objective, but I'm sure everybody here is writing so that way everybody else in the community can relate to it and understand it and love it as well. Indeed, indeed. That's and, a much better way of explaining um, than what was going on in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the challenge of being a writer, and it's also kind of fun in its own right. Mm. And in terms of pop, um, POV changes, I like to, I like to spell, it, spell it out because it's an abbreviation. Um, you know, FBI, CIA and NSA, et cetera. <laughs> but um, POV changes, oh God, you do see these a lot and it's so much and it gives the writer so much power to cram so many different moments into one chapter. Mm. Um, personally, I don't like those kind of POV changes where in one chapter you have so many different shifts and point of views. Um, I think the best way is how Rick Riordan does it in his Percy Jackson series and any of his series actually, and any of his mythology series is he, so most of his titles, at least in the more recent ones, is they don't really have a name, but the title is the name of the character in which the point of view is about. So that way you can follow, so it's like a band, it's normally a band of three people. And, but when they split paths, you forget to follow each one on their journey to some degree. So let's stick with the original three. What was it, Grover, Percy, and Annabeth. So let's say that all three of them get split up and we're, we're, we're focusing on Percy. Next chapter is called Annabeth. Now we know the chapter, we're talking about what happened, what Annabeth's side of the story, what is happening. And then Grover, Percy, whatever. And it alternates between them and eventually they join back together and it continues in another perspective. Point is the chapter titles are the point of use and it tells the reader, you for this chapter you only need to know that this is from the perspective of this character and it's simple instead of constantly changing it because i find myself accidentally missing that bit that says oh, point of view change and i continue reading and i'm like wait what just happened this looks mm-hmm. really odd and it's not as easy to read anymore so yeah just one idea i like i like point of view changes makes sense um just, you just got to remember what is your what is your style how are you telling the story because mm-hmm. you, you, you don't have to tell us everything that's going to happen or is happening but help us do move along <laughs> <laughs> um what was this okay this is a more also in a, of an aesthetic thing i just have here page long breaks so i i normally read wattpad stories on my phone um if you read it on the website i actually would be interested please comment below if if you read on on the website rather than your uh, rather than the app because i think that's fairly interesting but i read on my phone and the thing is when you create so many uh paragraph breaks 
I, I understand maybe you're trying to use it to build suspense, but if too many happen, then it just looks, for me, it just feels like you're kind of cheating the system. So when I look down at the beginning, I have a page count, so I know how long the chapter is. And so that gives me a good grasp of the duration of the story or how fast I can read it. And so when I see 20 chapters, but really only 10 of those chapters have actual text written on them, you know, I do kind of feel a little cheated at the end. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, think about it, because I understand maybe you want to use those page-long breaks to build up suspense. It's kind of like that dun-dun, dun-dun moment in movies where it's just building up suspension and tension, and you're just like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And frankly, writing is not – you can't exactly overlap the same techniques. I think there's a different level, yet yeah, there's a different way to do, do them, because film is visual. It's with your, it's, it's with your eyes. There's images and it's less imagination centric and it also plays with audio 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 visuals as well because you are relying on these two senses to create this 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 image the story but with writing you only have visual and you only have your imagination and mm -hmm. so you the, basically the author this is a fun part of writing in my opinion is you have to create or find a way in your writing to bring to act to create that kind of sensation without using cinematic techniques or maybe you can readapt them but you can't don't don't do treat it as like it's supposed to be a normal book in a normal normal paper bound book you won't find a big line of blank text followed by the next paragraph and whatever is supposed to hit at that moment at that climax and here's the thing it needs to, if you're doing that, it needs to climax. Don't undershoot it because then, then you're cheating us. You're cheating the audience and it's just not fun for the reader. Although I do have to admit um, the end of my Art of the Con story where I leave it very open-ended. I talked to some people about it. A lot of them are kind of ticked off that I left it that open-ended because one of the characters may, has a very big decision. She can either go one way in life or the other way, but the decision that she made, I don't reveal it. And I did that intentionally because I want you as the reader, what do you think? Given what you've read so far, what do you think her as a character, what is she gonna do now? You know? mm -hmm. And I think that, that gives, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, at the end of the story, I am kind of handing the baton off to the reader is I don't have the power anymore and you're having the power you get to decide how the story ends in a, way, in a way. It's just an artistic flair I put on it that I'm sure nobody's appreciating. <laughs> Do you have any more? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go for um, it. This is my last one. Unnatural reactions. Well, clearly those are pet peeves, but like, you gotta <laughs> give us an <laughs> example, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, the way you was doing it, like you was about to say something. All right, cool, cool, cool. Make this quick. Um, so, unnatural reactions. Now, we know in anime, or any cartoon for that, you know, for this example, that these characters will have some kind of motivation, some kind of adrenaline to boost them. But there are also limits. They, in their thoughts, they're like, my, my elbows are creaking, my shoulders are getting tense stuff, and I can't control them. No. Okay. So, you know, there's always some form of realism in every single thing you see in movies, cartoons, anime, stories. And since I'm talking about stories, that's what I'm going to base this off of. I see that a lot of people does this, like say that the main character gets shot. Now, say that unlike JT's story, this main character didn't have a plan. So he didn't, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> die. <laughs> and I feel like no one really explains why this is happening like why is this character still alive at this moment are they possessed or because uh, just having adrenaline isn't going to get you through a gunshot depending on where it comes from especially yeah but then to some degree it, it, it i don't think it's very common but adrenaline can keep your blood flow your, your 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 brain pumping for so long that you may not notice it at first but the thing is uh, this is kind of where the placebo effect comes in is the moment you you, you notice it then it becomes real in a way. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing you can play around actually. The moment you notice it, you notice it in reality, 
then it becomes real for you. And then you actually feel the effects of its aftermath, right? Um, and unnatural reactions. And if I'm going to be honest, I would say put yourself in, that sh in their shoes maybe if this happened to you in real life. And the thing is, everything has to be on. You have to be really dead honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if I did this in real life, how would I react to it? Or how would this character react to it? What is this character's morals and personality puts them into? Why would they do that? Why would this even happen? You have to ask yourself all these why and what questions because that is what makes your story realistic and that's what makes it um, real to the readers in the end. Mm, I, yeah. And one way that I overcame this because I, once again, you suffer from it too. Um, like in my project right now with these different characters, I take the personality, for instance, if you're an extrovert and you're, you like the challenge, of course, you'd be more willing to go towards the danger. But if you're like me in real life and you're an introvert and you see danger, you're going to go away because, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be there. So it's like take in consideration their personalities, their character, and, you know, use that as a reaction kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we can probably do one more. Okay, so I got time skips. Do you want to talk about time skips or I yes. got one more? Time yes. skips? All right. So last one we're going to do for today is time skips and mm. oh, time skips, man. Um, I'm, I'm starting to find, to figure out ways to go about time skips, but I really hate it when you have the, when you have the writer just go asterisk time skip, maybe they give you a certain duration of time. I did that in art of the con cause I, cause that was my little, my first writing experience and I had no idea how to get past that. But, um, here's the thing. Don't explicitly just say time skip. That is the biggest thing I can tell you. Do not ever just say asterisk time skip asterisk because that is lazy writing and it is annoying. Um, <laughs> it, it, there's just no, there's, there's just no artistic value to it um, or writing value to it. But I, but like right now I'm, I can think of ways to go about it. What you can do is hint that there was one. Um, so, I think the best way I can explain is using my book, for example, in book in the cha second chapter, um, there was a six month, a six month time skip mm -hmm. from the previous chapter to that point in time. And instead of just saying time skip, what I just could have done is instead, um, when my, when the reader insert comes and they see Jung Yun, you could have her say, six months you haven't t called me talked to me or blah 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 to me in any form or way and now you just show up out of nowhere this better be good or something like that and so just by saying it like that i have established six months have passed before they have last met or talked and now he's just shown up kind of out of the blue hmm. not kind of want to go back and change it but <laughs> <laughs> um, but i hope you understand what i'm trying to get at with that because um you, you, you know, don't explicitly say, stating what is happening or what is going to happen is a little boring. And it mm -hmm. kind of leaves little creative license for your readers. Because the, another fun thing about reading a book is you're kind of making it up as you're going along too. Because what the reader is going to see is going to be most likely be different than what the writer sees, given that they don't include enough details. Like, so the, the hard part about being a writer is you have to provide enough details that your point gets across, but you do not want, um, you do not want to put so many, so many limitations on that character or the situation that your, your readers can't just kind of make stuff up as that happens. For example, I'm, I haven't read Harry Potter in a long time, but I'm sure that they've never specified certain things and that allows your imagination to go, I picture Hermione as so-and-so. I don't know why I'm using Hermione as an example, but you know, it's, they leave out little small details that allows you to go, I can, the way I'm reading this, I can visualize it in this certain way. And it may not be the same from person to person. Yeah. We should do a topic on time scope one day. Time skips. Time skips. Yeah, like, it'd be a very it's, small. It's a, it's, a, it's a very very tough one to handle. That from what I see, or people are just too lazy to actually figure out a way around it. 
but mm. personally it's a pet peeve i don't like it when you just straight out say time skip because um, it's just not fun you can hint at it but that's probably as most as i do with it yeah all right so that's we ha we still have how many have we i've only taken down five from my list and i'm pretty sure i have a lot to go so we're probably going to have more continuations as we go along but yeah pet peeves if you have a pet peeve please comment below what are your pet peeves when you're reading um things that you don't like seeing um maybe you'll find something that other people find that are pet peeves that you are perfectly fine with and that's all right because we are all different individual people and we see things different ways and we all have different opinions about different things that being said good vibes I'm sure some things have been happening to us lately that we are happy about or maybe not so happy about. <laughs> um, not a good vibe, but I have two exams in two days and these are college <laughs> level courses. So <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do a podcast instead of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of felt bad for not being able to do one last week for you guys. Um, I just, I, I mean, like, I kind of like making this a weekly thing for me. So that way I can come talk to you guys indirectly. Um, I, I found, I talked to a lot of people and they say I have a very calming voice. Some said like it helps them go, go to sleep. I don't know <laughs> if that's a compliment or not, but like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it as a win. <laughs> so I thank never thought of that. You, who, if you're listening right now, you know who you are. And it's not just you. There are probably other people as well. There are at least two people who I've talked to who said, man, your voice is really calm and soothing and it's very, I'm going to take it for a win, okay? I'm going to take it for a win. That's my good vibe, okay? I'm going to take it for a win. <laughs> what about you, Jay? Um, so aside from having to teach myself my own college subjects, um, I We're started doing... hit with a lot of bad stuff lately, huh? Yeah, like I, I hate it here. <laughs> but um, I started doing dance tiktoks with one of my classmates hey. and yeah it's going pretty well it's going pretty well we're supposed to be doing another one this monday monday yeah so that'd be fun mm -hmm. low-key so okay we're kind of going off i'm kind of going off script here but like low-key i really want to do like one of those face reveal things where like at this point i don't think anybody knows who, what we look like i know 13 knows what i look like um Mark, Dr. No Jams 0613, we know what he looks like, he knows what we look like, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Mm. Um, if I, I think some other people know what like my torso looks like because <laughs> I put uh, my, my, my Da Hyundai magic trick once on, on, on the server. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I kind of want to do a, like a face reveal, but there's not a lot of people we're kind of into the into this right now. So if you want a face reveal, um, let's see if we can get to a thousand subscribers. Share with your friends. Share with other writers. Share with other authors. If we get to a thousand subscribers, we will do a face reveal. At least that's the limit. At least, at least I think that's decent for me. What about you, Jay? Yeah. A it's, a bit, okay. it's a milestone. All right. Yeah. You guys get us to a thousand subscribers, and we will we will. Um, <laughs> no we're like what 17 right now <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a big milestone 1000 yet yeah, 17 subscribers um you know it'll be a big milestone for us it'll be a big milestone for you we we just want to you know create like a goal so that way you have something to work for you know um so yeah face reveal at a thousand subscribers reach us uh, share with your friends um, do not share with your family. Uh, <laughs> just, um, if you got some family who actually do this kind of stuff or enjoy this kind of, enjoy our stuff, please subscribe. We would love it. Um, I don't know. That was like a really big tangent right there for me. <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I mean, like, I, I mean, I've been watching like a React a YouTube channel and like, I don't understand how like they can have their faces revealed and like talk about all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we should do a react stuff. At, oh, we could. Like a, we get, react to thousand, videos. Get to, a thousand, oh. get to a thousand subscribers. Our faces are revealed, and we can do reacts. Wait, so are we gonna react to like fan fictions? Are you gonna react to like videos and stuff? Ooh, we can do both. 
okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can actually start, like, you know, I think, I know Instagram has it, but they have that little poll thing. All right, was it Instagram? It's, it's something, but you can make a poll, and, like, people could go on there and vote for, like, what they want us to react to and stuff. I think we we'll probably do lots of our stuff through Discord, because mm -hmm. I am very... I'm very active on Discord. 13 is a very good moderator. 13, if you're listening, mwah, thank you so much for moderating. <laughs> no, it's like on every day. It's like, hey, how are you guys doing? And you know, like, how are you guys feeling? How are you guys doing? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, 13, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much. Um, I do know that at this current moment in time, you're, you're kind of going through a rough patch and we are here for you, but we have to thank you for everything you've done. He helped us with the, um, the little, um, our little what 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 you might call it the image to the cafe cafe yeah so, the little cafe image and he's actually I think he's working on making us a mascot right now um, during his free time and so and and and, and as a profession as he is a professional uh, like he does actual art commissions and all that and music commissions and all that um, I, we are very thankful that he is doing this for no charge at least at the current moment until we can find some form of passive income um we have to thank him for doing this for us and we really appreciate your help 13. muchas gracias dude so Anywho, you can speak spanish but you can't speak korean yeah well i took four years of spanish and so that's a slightly different yeah, it took four years of spanish i don't care i haven't taken any korean bruh <laughs> all right anyway back to our scheduled format Platforms, uh, podcast. I mean, you 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 should know where this is already. Anchor has all is our distributor. They put it out to everywhere: Breaker, Cast, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcasts. And if more people actually go through it on Apple Podcasts, I'm pretty sure we might be able to generate some passive income. Um, Radio Public, anyway, and also YouTube. Uh, because we know that if you at least go through Anchor or use the ones through Anchor, they will put up ads and that will at least give us a little bit of income, which we can use possibly for contests and giveaways in the future, which we kind of really want to do. Um, and I mean, YouTube, I'm pretty sure that's where everyone's listening to it from right now. Um, if you're there, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we think you really should because we want to talk to you, please. Please talk to us. Um, we're, we're very lonely. But then again, we're also busy too. So we like to look at it during our free time. All right. Once again, thank you everybody for stopping by the Cafe Cafe. We appreciate all of your presences. It has been I, J, and me, JT. And we hope you all have a wonderful weekend, wonderful week. Enjoy your month. Until we meet you all again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.